And then we're going to teach you a song, okay? So uh, today we're going to be talking about Are You Hungry? Somebody say that? Are, Are you, you hungry? hungry? Hallelujah. So we're going to look at lots of scriptures, but let me just... When I heard that a couple of days ago, it came out of my spirit as I was waking up. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? And of course, I told the Lord, yes, I'm hungry, God. And uh, just some things were coming out of my spirit, and I wrote them down into kind of like a little chorus. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you this song. Hallelujah. Let me pray. Father, thank you so much again for this opportunity, Lord, to come with you. Come here, be here with you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let me teach it to you. It goes like this. Are you hungry? Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Are you hungry? Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. One more time, sing with me. Are you hungry? Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Then come and feed, and I will fill thee. Yes, come receive of me. Isn't that wonderful? Try it. Are you hungry? And answer him. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Are you hungry? Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Are you hungry? Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Then come and feed, and I will fill thee. Yes, come receive of me. Isn't that wonderful? <clears throat> I am hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. I am hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. I am hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. So I come and receive, O oh Lord, please fill me. Yes, fill me with yourself. Wow, that's powerful. I am hungry. Last verse. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. I am hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. I am hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. So I give you all. Yes, I commit my all. As you fill me, I'll do your will. Oh my goodness. Isn't that powerful? Wow, we. Whoa, we. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You're so wonderful, Lord. And if you mean it, say it. Say, I am hungry, God. And I'm open to you. Speak to me today. I'm open, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, let's open up our Bibles. Find Matthew chapter 16. Now, what does it mean to be hungry? I'll give you a definition from the, the dictionary. It says to feel or display the need for food, having a strong desire or a craving. Have you ever seen somebody hungry? Yes. Yes. Have you ever been hungry? Yes. Have you ever been hangry? <laughs> I can tell when I'm angry and i got to catch myself. But it's a strong desire. And when somebody actually is hungry, then it affects them. Who's listening? Yes, yes or no? It actually affects them. So I'm going, to look, I'm going to show you lots of scriptures today. We're going to read through Matthew chapter 16. But I'm going to show you lots of scriptures at the same time. So are you hungry? The yes. Bible says blessed. Somebody say blessed. Blessed. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Somebody say righteousness. Righteousness. So it, depends, it makes a difference what you're hungry for. And it's those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. They shall be filled. So when I say I'm hungry, Lord, I'm open, Lord. Well, what does he want to come in and do? Fill you, Fill you but make things right. So once he starts to come, if I say, oh, no, I don't want it right, you're really not yet that hungry. Amen. 
So I'm going to read some scriptures. So, and I got lots to go through. So I'm just introducing to you the fact that it's a biblical term to be hungry for God. Hungry for the things of God. When he said it to me, this is what was coming out of me. God, I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for change. And I'm hungry for other people to know you. And for other people to experience change. That's me. I'm hungry for you, God. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. So if you're really hungry, you're going to do something about it. If, if, I, if I say, if you say, I'm so hungry, what are you saying to your children? I'm hungry. Okay, have an apple. Uh, are they really hungry? No, they just want to something. They don't want an apple. They're not that hungry. Who's ever been like really hungry? Like uh, the guy, the prodigal son, how hungry was he? He was so hungry that pig slop started to look appetizing. You know that your, your, your palate is going through some things when pig slop starts to look appetizing. Who's listening? That's hungry. And that's, he got so hungry that he actually experienced change, which is actually the same word as repentance. He actually was willing to say, hey, hmm... Maybe my dad wasn't a fool after all. Maybe, and he actually got honest, maybe I'm the fool. And maybe I should just go ahead and just go and submit to my dad. And at least, I can't be a son maybe, but at least I'll have some food. Yes or no? This is, this is when, when you're really hungry, you actually do something about it. So when I say, God, I'm hungry for you, then what do I do? I actually go and I partake. I'm hungry for change. Well then... That means when he starts dealing with me, I yield to his dealings. Amen. And then if I'm hungry for other people to know him, which is what we're doing right now, then I'm going to give the opportunity for other people to experience him. And then if I'm hungry for other people to change, then I'm going to encourage them in changing. As the deer pants for the water broke, so my, my soul pants for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for who? God, the living God. Psalm 42, verse 1 and 2. When shall I come and appear before God? He was thirsty for God. So what did he want to do? Go to God. Who's listening? If you're really hungry for God, then what are you going to go do? You're going to go get God. Amen? Amen? So let's read Matthew chapter 16. Hungry. Hungry. Are you hungry? And then hungry for what? We're going to address. We're going to talk about it. Matthew chapter 16. Hallelujah. Going to read through a lot of this chapter. And then most of the other scriptures I'm going to have on the screen. So don't worry about it. But let's take some time to read some verses. Who loves the Bible? Amen. Who understands that the Bible is the truth? It's the truth. It'll never be outdated. Actually, who's listening? Science will only over time catch up with this. But it will never catch up totally and it will never overtake it. Amen. Because it's impossible for them to ever learn everything. There will always be more. But this book actually already knows the end from the beginning. CNN will never catch up with this. Fox News will always be miles behind. They'll only be reporting what's been in the written book for thousands of years. Amen? So we love the word. Amen? All right, let's read some of Matthew chapter 16. I'll make a few comments on it. The Pharisees, also with the Sadducees, came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Watch this. He answered them, what is, what it is, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. In the morning it will be foul weather. Today... For the sky is red and lowering. O oh, you hypocrites, listen, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. sign. What kind of a, de a generation? A wicked and adulterous. Let me just make this declaration real clear about this right here. God owes nothing to anybody. He doesn't have to prove one thing to anybody. Jesus is making a warning here. He tells them, beware the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees that demand that God prove something before they believe in him. That is called a wicked 
an adulterous generation. If the stars are not enough for you, the sun is not enough for you, the breath that you, and I'm, I'm talking to you, I don't know where, I'm not mad at you, I'm just preaching, you're hearing me, you're the one right here. I'm preaching in general. If the breath that you, God allows you to breathe with to cuss him is not enough proof for you, then you, whatever. Do whatever you want to do. You don't want to believe in God, then don't believe in him. Somebody say amen. amen. God does not have to prove one thing to one person. He's already done so much. He's continually doing so much. Yes. And the resurrection and the, uh, is the more than enough. Yes. Amen? amen? So the, the wickedness of the Sadducees and Pharisees is the hardness of heart and slow to believe God. It's the same wickedness that the Israelites had in the desert. And that's not going to be us. Amen? We're believers. We believe God. Amen. So watch this. Jesus talks about, uh, let me just see if I wanted to read something else here. So I, I just said it, verse 6 said, Take heed, beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So you need to watch out for this, okay? Leaven leavens a whole lump of dough. Wrong thinking, wrong mindsets affect a whole culture. Who's listening? Yes. So, you're to actually beware what kind of leaven you allow into you because it will affect your faith. Praise God. So, watch this back to verse 3. Jesus said, you hypocrites, you discern the face of the sky, but you can't discern the signs of the times. It's important to understand the day and the time that you live in. You must understand, we say it often, but your time is limited on the earth. Do you have peace about that? You can have peace about that and live a life of purpose or you can be afraid of that. Listen to me closely and I'm not, this is not mean. God is not mean. It's simple Bible truth. The world that does not want to honor God as God should be scared. There's a reason they're scared. They should be scared. They're on very shaky ground. And actually the promise that there is an eternal judgment that they will have to meet. So it's actually scary because it should be scary. But for the saved person that actually is hungry for God enough to really give their whole life to Him. It casts out all fear and they can be stable knowing I'm on an unshakable kingdom. And it changes everything. Amen? So just a couple notes about the times that we're living in, okay? Jesus was very clear. He said, in this world you will have trouble, but be of good courage, I have overcome the world. He said that in the last days there will be, anyone want to make some guesses? Wars, rumors of wars, pestilences, fam famines, earthquakes. He said, all these things must come to pass, but he said, be, let, do not let your heart be troubled. And then he also said, do not be deceived by all the false doctrines and the false Christs. That, and a false Christ means not just somebody who says up and says, I'm Jesus Christ. You know, I was born in 1979. It was a miraculous thing. And I'm the, I'm the son of God. Who would believe me if I said that? No one here. Now, maybe there would be some crazy. You could find some crazy people in the world. But that's not all Jesus is talking about. Christ has to do with salvation, Savior. Another way to God. Another way to healing and deliverance. Other than the power of God. Amen? And that stuff's everywhere in the world. So, these times are actually a time of turmoil. And you need to know that it's okay. God already knows and He has a plan. Amen. So important for you to understand this. Who's listening very closely? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm going to make some comments on... The economy, real quick, not because I'm an economist, but because uh, you need to know what the Bible says. Okay? <clears throat> well, Lord have mercy. You know, I, all I'm going to do is just tell you, number one, what the Bible says, and then number two, some things that that I heard in the Spirit, and and it's just, it's just how it is. Okay, so let me just read what I wrote. Well, I heard this last night. I'm staying out of what will be the worst recession in 150 years. Who else is in on that? 
I'm going to stay out of that. Who's not going in for it? Who doesn't want to be a part of it? I'm staying out of what will be the worst recession in 150 years. I'm not prophesying it. If it comes to pass, it comes to pass. If it doesn't, I'll be happy. But either way, I'm staying out. How am I going to stay out? How am I going to stay out? Who wants to stay free? Who wants to not be afraid of the world economy collapsing? You need, you need to know that whatever happens in the world, God already has a plan, and you're on an unshakable kingdom. Very important to know. Otherwise, like Jessica said, you will bow to whatever anybody says out there to do. And you need to know how to hear God's voice and do exactly what God tells you to do. All right, I'm just going to read this. Put it out there, but it's important for you to understand as a Christian, if the news starts talking about crazy economic stuff, you have to know what the Bible says. You have to know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Amen. Amen? What does that mean, he's my shepherd? I actually follow him. I listen to his voice, and I follow him. And you'll be okay. Somebody say that. If I listen to his voice, I to his voice. and I follow him... I will be a okay. You need to guard. The Bible says that these things will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's called the peace that passes all understanding. When the world screams, ah, you, you should have already known that the world is in that state. Okay? And, but you need to know what state you're in. Amen. Now, why am I talking about this when, when we're talking about hungry? This has everything to do. If you're not hungry for God, you're going you're gonna to end up in la-la land and in trouble before you know it. So you need to listen to the word of the Lord, okay? Let me just give you a couple of hints. Or, or I'm just, not, it's not hints. I'm just sharing what I got. I'll share a couple of principles and then we'll talk about hungry. Um, I heard this one year ago. I heard seven years of rejoicing and seven years of worry. Because God is going to cast out. Now, I'm not going to give the full interpretation of it because I'm not sure I have it. Except that I know this. When, when uh, Joseph found out that they had seven good years coming and then seven bad years after that, what did he do for seven years? He stored up. He prepared. Not in fear. That's wisdom. Does the Bible talk about preparing? Yes. And I'm not talking about storing up food. I'm talking about you, it's, you have, that was one year ago. So I know we got six years of rejoicing. Now, I don't know what that means, okay, exactly. I'm not guaranteeing that the world is going to be a-okay and happy for the next six years. But I, I just, I'm, I'm going to play it like, okay, that means I got six years to really press into God and make sure I can get all the oil of God I can. So that I don't get caught like the foolish, who remembers this? The foolish uh, bridesmaids that did not have... Did I get the word wrong? Bridesmaids. Virgins. The foolish virgins that did not have oil stored up. Did they get the same memo as the other ones? Yes, God is fair. Is God shouting from the housetops? Yes. Did God shout it? Did God have Noah prophesy and preach it for hundreds of years before the flood ever came? Yes, on the day the flood came, the people are still throwing parties like the flood's not coming. Even though they know it's coming. Even though they know their house is built like a house of cards, they still act like it's nothing. And then when stuff happens, who do they blame? God. They're going to blame God. And God is still going to get the blame. And then they're going to come to you, Christian, and say, Oh, I thought you said you'll have a good God. I do have a good God. You didn't choose Him. You rejected Him. Do the simple ABCs and one, two, three. It's simple. Yes. yes. But there's lots of distractions in the world, and that's why you've got to make your decision who you're hungry for, who you're going to focus on, and who you're going to follow, because distractions will only get more rampant with years. Yes or no? Yes. Our kids don't know. They don't even know what it is to not have YouTube Social media, Google, AI, AI, I mean, the AI is fairly new for them. But in a few years, there'll be a generation that does not know a world without AI. Right. They think that's normal. <laughs> like, and you're going to have to have discernment 
in these days. And the only way to have discernment, discernment's not some weird thing. It's just you are focused so much on God that you know the truth versus lies. There's only one way to know the truth versus the lies is you got to know the truth. That's the only way. So we're going to talk about that. <clears throat> so I believe we have six years of rejoicing. And that's not a commentary on exactly what's happening, except that I know I got six years before some serious stuff happens. And I'm not even talking about, don't get a subject. I'm just saying all I know is I got six years to press in and learn and learn and learn. Because when I heard God is going to cast out, you know, there's different things in the Bible. The Bible talks about God giving them up to a reprobate mind. I think a lot of that's already happened. But uh, to the church, Jesus said that if you don't get your act together, I will spew you out. So that means there's an age of timing where God is patient even with his own people. But when his own people don't get on board, at some point he makes separations and things. And so uh, when that happens... There's a rude awakening in the world, even in the Christian world, because they think, anyways, people are going to get confused. So you don't want to be confused. And the, the simple way to not get confused is just stay with the word. So what's the, what's, what I'm going to do is, staying out of a recession by building my life on Him, learning His ways, following the Holy Spirit, investing gladly into His kingdom, because I know He will not go without a cheerful giver. That's a huge hedge against economic crisis. You make sure you're partnered in with him and what he's doing. And you're in for a ride because the gospel is going to go till the very end. Amen. Yes. Who understands that? Amen. AI will never become God because there's already a God. And he's so much far above. Actually, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than any AI they can make up. If that Christian would even know something about who they are in Christ. Amen. So that's why you got to find out who you are in Christ. That's why you got to get hungry. Okay. <clears throat> really quickly. This is all just commentaries. Then I'm going to show you lots of scriptures. Here's, here's I'm going to talk about some, some things that people will call political. And if it gets offensive to you that I'm talking politics, then get offended because I'm not going to change it. Because I'm not trying to be political. I'm going to preach some, some Bible principle truths that are very important for people to make it in these last days. What did I just say? For people to... That's what a shepherd's job is, is to make sure, hey, just so you know, you got to do this or else you are in big trouble. I love you. Get this straight. Can you get it straight? Yeah? So there's actually no excuse. Okay, so here's a couple things. You need to vote. And you need to vote right. And I'm going to tell you why. Regardless who ends up getting in, if you voted contrary to God's word, you will be responsible, a part of being responsible for whatever craziness propels itself through this nation, through that administration. Yes. God will hold you personally responsible to having a part in it. So you need to go vote. And I won't tell you who to vote for. I'm going to tell you who I'm not going to vote for. And I'll let you... Yeah. Get offended into that, or like it, or whatever. But you figure it out. But you need to go vote. It's actually a, a, a stewardship thing. God has allowed you to live in a country where you actually get to vote. Even if it gets wacky. It's, whether the voting system's right or wrong, it is what it is. You have the opportunity to vote, so you just do your part. Then whatever happens, come hell or high water, I did my part. I'm not in on the recession because I didn't vote for the recession. Amen. I voted for God's kingdom to have its way in America, and I know God is with me. Amen. Now, there are certain people that if, if be placed in office because of people's choices, it's because people love wickedness, and it will make it harder for righteousness and easier for wickedness to reign. Yeah. And Christians are supposed to care about that. Yes. I'm saved. And I'll protect my household and I can help my children. But I have a, a say in what happens out there. And so I, I actually have to give my say. Mm -hmm. Amen? So Amen. vote wrong and you are a, a, you are a participant in recession. 
the importance of voting, God will hold you accountable. Who I will not vote for. <laughs> okay, I'll just say it, okay? Someone who is not a leader. What do I mean by that? A leader has to know how to take heat. If you can't stand up and, and answer some questions from opposing people without everything being 100% choreographed in your favor, and if nobody knows what I'm talking about, that's fine. But if you have any inclination, then I'm just letting you know that is not a leader. That is a puppet. And I'm not going to vote for anybody that's not a leader. That's me. That's me. Because on the world stage, you're going to get whacked. And if you're a puppet, who's the hand that's actually, who am I actually voting for? That's important to know. Who am I actually voting for? Okay. All right. You know, that's why we say, give us at least six months to offend you as much as we can to make sure that this is where, that you're happy here. And, uh, you know, election time separates a lot of people and it's, it shouldn't because you should know what you believe. But I'm just telling you some basic principles. James, uh, James chapter 3 said, Let not many of you become teachers because you're going to get a stricter judgment. So that's a biblical principle. You want to vote for a leader that can actually answer questions, get whacked, bam, 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 and then still still stand their ground and be the same person. All right. Praise the Lord. I'm just telling you who I'm not going to vote for. Someone who is for abortion. I'm just letting you straight know. If anybody offended Letting you know, I'm not going to vote for anyone who's pro-abortion. Right. Right. Period. Yeah. If I need to do a whole doctrinal study with you on that, then we can do that. But I don't have time right now. But I'm just telling you outright. Somebody who's pushing homosexual agenda on our children, forcing it into our homes, making it easier and easier for people to sin, Making it easier and easier for sexual perversion to be rampant. And listen, affect our young people yes. and their mental health and their destinies. Mm -hmm. I can't be a part of that. Right. Yes. If somebody wants to be wacky, I'll let them be wacky if they really want to. But I can't be for making legislature that's going to make wickedness taught indoctrinated into kindergartners forced into every realm of society and then if anybody dare read certain verses from this book you could be charged with hate crimes and all sorts of stuff and watch preachers get thrown in prison and churches sued that's not a, that's not the free America that the founding fathers built. Right. It's not. It's wickedness. And so, and like I said, somebody wants to be wacky, that's their wackiness. But don't force it on children and bring confusion on them. That's when you're going to get the mama bear rise up and say, uh-uh, uh, excuse me. This is not political talk. This is Bible. This is simple. This is straightforward. No. Well, you're a Christian. No. You're a pastor. Shut up. Stop and get away from my children. Period. Yes. Okay. That's as straightforward and as simple as I can be. Praise God. Praise Making it harder and harder for the word to advance freely. First Timothy 2. I'm quoting scriptures. First Timothy 2 says, Pray that it be well, that all men should pray that it be well. Be Lord, God, word right here. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That we might live peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. Amen. I should be able to be free to raise my children in a healthy way and not be afraid that there's some people watching to steal my children from me. Because I treat them and I correct them and I teach them the truth. Anybody else? Uh, yes or no? Okay. So these are big things that you want to watch for when you're voting. Praise God. And uh, I could teach on it, and maybe we will, but right now, I just got to move along. Jesus said to me, uh, you should be discerning the time. So I'm just taking the opportunity to talk about this. I'm not going to vote for somebody who's in for favor for communism. Let Really quickly, equity versus truth. I'm hungry. One of the things we're going to look at is, what are you hungry for? I'm actually hungry for truth. Somebody say truth. truth. When they use this word equity, 
I'll use a Bible principle instead. Jesus taught on the parable of the talents. He said, everybody's given a hand to play. Yeah, Tyler might got one to play with. There's nothing in the Bible that feels sorry for Tyler. If Tyler will take the one and play his cards right and multiply it, what will God do? Reward him with more. That's called seed time and harvest. This is Bible principles. This is the kingdom of God. One thing God said to me one time, he said, uh, people's, the cards are actually stacked in their favor. I know that's hard for some people to swallow, but regardless of what hand you've been playing, if you will find out the truth, this is actually exciting, Cody, that whatever hand you got played, God would say, hey, I'll be your partner. I'll give you the hints of what to play when, and it's actually stacked in your favor. <laughs> but just you have to believe. This is the truth. If anyone will actually find out the truth of God's word and believe him and learn to walk by faith, they can win. Yes, Who actually believes that? That is the gospel. This, the, the, the Declaration of Independence talks about what? Life, liberty, and the freedom, the right to, the pursuit of happiness. Happiness is not a... It is a gift, but you are, but we've talked about it. The kingdom has to be worked. It's a field. You've got to go to work. You don't just sit at home and then complain that we should give you as big of a paycheck as the other guy who worked his butt off. Right. Yes or no? Yeah. All right. Wow. Is this fun or what? Yeah, Don't worry about God. I'm not voting for anybody like that because that's not the Bible principle. Right. The Bible principle is somebody should take what they got, learn to do it well, and they're rewarded with more. The person who doesn't do anything with what they're given, what happened in the parable? What did God call him? A wicked Lazy servant, take what he had, give it to the guy who actually is going to do something with it. So I'm giving you hints. Maybe this, some of this is new for you. You need to you need to start learning. Oh, Bible principles actually apply to government. Yes. So, wow, wait, is this fun or what? Let's roll. Let's roll. Let's roll. Okay. So, are you hungry? Who's hungry? Okay. What are you hungry for? Let me answer a couple questions. What are what are people hungry for? I I just quoted life, liberty. And the pursuit of happiness. I believe that, that, that those are rights that everybody should have. Life. Somebody say life. Life. Okay, well, what is life? Where is life? Where is life found? Let's look at some scriptures. Ready? John 17, 3. Who's hungry for life? Yes. You're actually hungry for it. People are actually hungry for life. This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent Eternal life, true life, is to know God intimately. That's why when he said, are you hungry? I said, yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Are you hungry? Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Then come and feed. Come receive of me. So where is life? It's in him. How do you get to him? Through his son. That's the only way. And when you come to him, is he real? Can you actually touch him? Can you taste him? Can you see him? Yes. And I'm not talking about with your physical, but in the spirit. Who's ever seen God? Don't get confused. I'm not talking about with these eyes. Just when you can perceive something in the spirit, even when you're just in worship, all of a sudden there's just a subdueness in your spirit. You're actually seeing God. Maybe not clearly, like a baby that can barely see, but you're seeing something. That's why all of a sudden you have peace. Yes. Yes. Amen. Well, what are you seeing? I don't know, but I try, who are you seeing? You're seeing God. Well, what does he look like? I don't know, but I can see him. I can taste him. I can feel him. To somebody that's totally carnal, that, that feels like I'm talking about carnal stuff. I'm not talking about carnal stuff. This is spiritually discerned stuff. And this is actually what every single human being on earth is hungry for. Every human being on earth. If you look at, I'll read you one verse. You can turn there if you like. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says this. God has placed eternity in men's hearts. But I always love to read it from the uh, Amplified Bible. It says, God has placed eternity in men's hearts. He made everything beautiful. He planted in men's hearts a divinely implanted sense of a purpose working through the ages, which nothing under the sun 
but God alone can satisfy. So when I say, are you hungry? Are you hungry? Well, what are you hungry for? I'm hungry for life. Well, what does that mean? You're actually hungry for God. You, that is actually, and there's only one thing that will actually satisfy that hunger. Who's listening? One thing. God. Only thing. Eternal life is actually Him. Your spirit was, was created to carry an eternal flame. And until you have that eternal flame of God in you, there's always something missing. And it's because God made it that way. So that every single, that's why you can go to Japan. You can go to, to the jungle. You can go to the prison. You can go to uh, uh, a sexually con uh, confused person, a mentally retarded person. Did I use that word wrong? I don't know. Uh, uh, somebody who's slower, whatever the word. Whatever, male, female, rich, poor, doesn't matter. You can be assured there's something way down deep that is hungry yes. to know God. That's a, that's a fact. Amen. So, what am I hungry for? I'm actually hungry for Him. This is what Paul said in Philippians 3. That I may know Him. Knowing. Knowing. That's what I'm hungry for. So, I'm hungry to know Him. But I'm actually hungry for other people to know Him. There's a difference knowing about Him and knowing Him. Amen. Who knows about Donald Trump? Of course, everybody. Has, has anyone, do any of you actually know Him? No, you've never actually, because you, you, to say you know him, you'd actually have to at least have some kind of meet, meeting where he acknowledges you and you acknowledge him. And then you'd have some kind of connection. So knowing God is actually meeting him, knowing him. I love, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about personal. This is my heart. When I said, God, I'm hungry. I'm hungry to know you. I'm hungry for change. We're going to talk about that. But I'm also hungry that everybody will know you. Other people will know you. Amen. Paul said that I may know him, the power of his resurrection. But watch some of the mindsets that he had. To If you're really hungry, this is one of the mindsets you have. Forgetting what's behind and I press toward the mark of the, of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Are you hungry? Amen. Are you hungry? Okay, then let this mind get inside you. I'm hungry, God. So I'm forgetting. I don't even have time for all that. I'm running after you. A hungry person is actually seeking food, looking for food. And when they find the food, what do they do? They eat it. You want to know how somebody, when somebody is not hungry? Uh, you know, you go, <laughs> you know, Cody, your wife made you a huge meal. You ate at five o'clock. And then, you're, and then I call you over. I say, hey, Cody, come over. We made some food. Cody's going to come, and he's going to be graciously trying to eat the food. But way down deep, he's like, Lord, have mercy. Like, I don't even want to eat this. It's, I'm so full. Anybody ever been so full? Everybody. You've been so full that, please. I literally, like, if I get that full, which I, 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 when I do, I'm like, that was kind of wrong. I probably shouldn't have done that. But I'm like, when I know, when I'm so full, I say, you can't even, don't even mention food right now. I'm not joking. Don't mention it. I can't look at it. And you're not even joking. Who knows what I'm talking about? You're so full. It's not even a joke. If, the, if they try and remind you of what you just finished, you're like, please, give me 20 minutes. And just don't talk about food right now. Lord have mercy. Yes or no? Yes. That is a full person. Are they a hungry person? No. no. You got to build your hunger for God. You want to know how you kill hunger for God? Be so full of other stuff yes. that when someone offers you pure milk, pure meat, the bread of heaven, you're like, ah, ah I've had better. Ah, ah I kind of want it. Ah, I kind of won't want it. Ah, I'll force myself to eat it. Is that person hungry? No. 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 So, Paul had a hunger for God that was uh, insatiable. Okay, so what's somebody so Life what was the second one. Liberty. 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 And the pursuit of happiness. People are hungry for this. And you want to know why? Because it's actually a gift from God. It's actually what you should have. You should have life. Is the gospel free? Yes. Can anybody have eternal life in them? Yes. yes. What about the worst sinner in the world? Yes. yes. What about the poor, uh, the, 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 the person with the least amount of money in the world? Yes. The most amount of money? The least famous? Yes. The most famous? Yes, yes or no? Yes. It's amazing when a celebrity gets saved, everybody, I mean, they get grilled like as if, they're supposed to be a Sunday school teacher all of a sudden. Just let them be, let them. Let them be saved and get their life straight. Yeah. Anybody say amen? Yeah. 
Do celebrities deserve mercy just as much as somebody else? Yes. yes. So I don't know. We're, we're pretty hard on celebrities. But uh, everybody. So life is free. Okay. What about, what about freedom? Where's freedom? Okay. I'll show you. Jesus said, here it is. Jesus said to those Jews who believed, if you abide in my word, you're my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, truth and the truth will make you free. free. There's actually only one way to, to be free. It's to actually know the truth. And then later on the verse he said, Moses should I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. So when I'm talking about this, I'm, we're going to talk about turning away from sin. Sin does not help me to enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Actually, it's bondage that, that quenches that stuff. A slave does not, okay, keep going. If the sun makes you free, you you'll be free indeed. indeed. Yes. So true freedom is where? What did Pilate say to Jesus? What is truth? Is that a common thing in the world? What is truth? Who knows what the truth is? What about the whole truth of nothing but the truth? Amen. Yeah, where is the truth? Indeed, if you've heard him and been taught by him, the truth is in Jesus, Ephesians 4, 21. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. How many? No one. No one. Can this ever change? No. What if we come up, let's come up with a nice, politically correct state religion. Hold on, no, i got a great idea. This will sell lots of books. This might even get me elected to the highest ranks. i got a great idea. We'll come up with a state religion. Listen. Listen, it won't offend anybody. It will, it will promise blessing to everybody. Who will it have, what will it have to cut out? How much of this will they have to rip up and burn and cause to be completely illegal with punishment by death kind of stuff? How much of this are they going to have to eliminate, change, and twist? And they're going to have to twist it. And, and, it, and it's not God. So this can never change. So I'm hungry for God. I'm hungry for what? I'm hungry for life. Where's life? It's in Jesus. I'm hungry for freedom. Where's freedom? It's in Jesus. It's in knowing Him. Knowing Him. If you continue in my word, you'll know Him and come to know truth and you'll be free indeed. Who's hungry for truth? Amen. Who's hungry for freedom? It's all available in Him. Amen? Here's a, a great verse just showing you the, uh, the, the, um, the value that God puts on freedom. Now, let me ask you a question. Does freedom mean there are no laws? No, that's actually not possible. Um, that's called lawlessness. In Christianity, Jesus is Lord and Master. He said... Uh, uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added up to you. Rules are actually framework for prosperity. Who understands that? Rules are actually framework. They actually cre create boundaries so you can build a house, you can have a church, you can be protected from the weather, you know which is male, which is female, you know they're married, so that, that's a covenant, that's a house. There's, it's just boundaries. It's just how things work. When you start taking down all those boundaries and saying, we just don't like boundaries. Well, they're going to set up some kind of other boundary. Yep, yeah. So it's completely hypocritical. The difference is what are the right boundaries and what are the wrong boundaries. But you have to have boundaries. Yes. Does God know what's right? Yes. yes. So that's always going to be the war. But there has to be some kind of boundaries. But God lo actually loves freedom. That's why this country, they, they did their best. And I believe that the Constitution is a... Is a is a wisely crafted thing by the, he the help of God. They used a lot of scriptures, did their best to build something where people could actually be free. It took a lot of wisdom. Who understands? It takes a lot of wisdom because of all these questions. Well, how can I be free and she be free at the same time? That it takes, a lot of, it, it takes a lot of wisdom. But uh, just understand, God is into freedom. Watch. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Do not be entangled again with a yoke of Bondage. So bondage is not freedom. Obvious. 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 So he said you free from that 
And then you really are free. So free is a big deal. Who's hungry for freedom? Amen. Amen. So, so let me just start wrapping it up, okay? So I said, when he said, are you hungry? I said, yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Are you hungry? I said, yes, I'm hungry, God. I'm hungry. I'm hungry for, and this is me. I'm hungry for you. I want to know you more. But I'm not just hungry for you. I want, I'm hungry for change, God. I want to continue to be, another word for that is maturing and growing in you. Why? Partly because you enjoy more freedom, but also because I want to be a bigger blessing to other people, which is the other thing I'm hungry for. I'm actually hungry that other people would know him. And other people would experience change. Amen. Change is not change until it's changed. Say that with me. Change is not change until it's changed. Now, in the Bible, there's a word called repentance. Repentance means to change. It means to be going in one direction, make a 180 turn, and go in the whole other direction. And true repentance has to do with the heart, the mind, uh, uh, amending your ways, amending your, the fact that you're in rebellion against God outright and making a decision to say, okay, God, instead of being in complete disobedience, I, I recognize you're a good God and I want to follow you. Amen. And then he treats you as his child. Are your children completely perfect yet? Are they beautiful? Yes. Are they amazing? Yes. yes. But... If they mess up one little thing, do you give up on them? Of course not. What do you do? You're training them. That's what you do with children. So, But their heart is to obey, but they have to be trained that obedience is better. And, and, and you get better fruit out of obedience. And if you teach them that, then they'll learn, oh, well, that's, that's a good idea there, to obey mommy and daddy. Instead of just being in rebellion and just bucking my head against the wall. Is anybody listening? If you buck your head against the wall long enough, the prayer is that before you bust your head and die, this is that the person actually wakes up. Hey, what am I doing? Just smashing my head against the wall. That's called an awakening. Has anyone had been awakened yet? You're like, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, sin brings in death. Oh, I get it. So instead of just sinning like a wild man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, God, help me. And I'm going to turn toward him. And then with his help, get freer and freer and stronger and stronger in him. Repentance. What is repentance? <clears throat> Romans 2 says, do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, longsuffering, not knowing what? The goodness of God leads you to repentance. That's, that's a very multifaceted scripture. One thing that it means is that when, if there's even anything inside of you that's even open to repenting, do not despise that. Guess what that is? That's God Almighty touching your heart. Yes. And there's no promise that He'll always do that. Yes. Some people harden their hearts against God so bad that eventually they get a seared conscience. And, that, and it's a long process. But they, you can be, you're not, not you. But they could become a reprobate that's like, there's nothing, there's no one touching their heart anymore because they've hardened their heart. They've rejected him so bad. So when you did, when you recognize him even touching your heart, be thankful. That's actually his goodness. That's actually him. And don't treat it lightly. Okay, God is actually helping me. Oh, I have a desire to do right. Oh my goodness. Don't despise that. Say, okay, take advantage. Lord, I have mercy. He's doing something inside of my heart. But it's also his goodness leads you to repentance. When you see his goodness, if you're going in this direction and you think, oh man, this is so cool, I'm running after this, I'm, I want to I wanna be like me, I want to be in a motorcycle gang, I want to be drunk, I want to be this, I want to be that. It was actually finding out how good he was that I was like, I started going more and more in this direction until I was like, all that stuff was so vain. It's, it's not just vain like a goody two-shoes vein, it's like so stupid, like it's literally stupid. And I have zero interest in it at all because I'm head over heels hungry and running after him. His goodness will actually cause you to want him more. Yes. So if you want to be hungry for God or you're, you're concerned that maybe you're not hungry enough, here's a remedy. Psalm 34 verse 8. Read it with me. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. When I was a kid, we had something called butter tarts. 
Anybody? I don't know if that's a Canadian thing. We probably have them around here somewhere, but they're kind of like a little tart, and then inside of it, it's kind of like uh, the thing, same thing you would put in a pecan pie, like a caramel mix kind of thing. And then it had a couple little nuts on it, so almost like a mini pecan pie, like just a little tart. And when I was a kid, it looked so nasty to me. Is anybody listening to me? There are so many things that only like 30 years later, I looked back and I thought, I gave my big brother all of those, all those years. When I found out how good they were, it's almost like I wanted to push rewind and get all those tarts back. Like, I gave him all that good stuff because I thought it was going to be nasty. Did you actually ever taste it? No, it looked so nasty. Anybody have a similar story? There's other things. I let my brother have it all because it had these little nuts on it. Liam is that way. If something has nuts in it, it's a chocolate chip cookie. He will not touch it because he saw a little nut on it. What is he missing out on? It's like, buddy, just, just taste it and you'll see. Taste. Just taste. They refuse. Taste. And see, what are you going to find out? He's actually really wonderful. Yes. Amen. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. He's wonderful. Yes. He's wonderful. And the more you taste, the more you see he's good. Now, this is not physical taste. This is spiritual. So this only, you have to be around the things of the spirit or else you forget. That's why we come to church. That's why we worship together. That's why you want to de develop a daily time where you taste him every day. You see him every day. You hear his voice every day. And everybody understands. I'm not talking about these ears, these eyes. It's just you're in, you're, you're in his presence. And the more you're around him, the more you actually want to be around him. Yes. And the less tasty the world. It's like, it's not even just not tasty. It's despicable. It's like, blah. Not interested. Amen. Amen. Hungry, hungry, hungry. Somebody say hungry. Now, hungry for him, but then hungry to be changed. Hungry for him, but hungry to be changed. There has to be change. You can't have life and liberty or freedom and actually not get changed. Anybody? You can't have the same stuff and be experiencing the amazing, unsurpassable peace of God. When you got all this stuff inside you. No, that stuff is the problem. So you got to allow him to do some stuff on the inside of you. you got to yield to the processes of God in your life. Who heard that? Amen. It's a process and that's okay. Who's under, that's actually a work of his patience. I enjoy his patience. Who's understanding his patience? His patience is, he, he's talking to you about something for like, I, I shared with you, it took me eight, an uh, 18 year process to Fully submit to the assignment to reaching and teaching children. I've shared that story. Who's heard me share? 18 years of God processing, processing, processing. Get that stupidity out. Correct that retardedness. Break that uh, uh, fear. Impart that piece of wisdom. Impart this understanding. And But the whole time it's a yielding. Okay. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And there's a transformation happening. The Bible talks about transformed. Ver, uh, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. So what do he say? Beware the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Remember? You don't want to be like the world that says, yeah, show me a sign. And what did Jesus say? I, I didn't read it. But he said, the only sign they're going to get, who knows what it was? No. The sign of Jonah. Now, there's multiple things about that. But number one, Jonah is, is like the death, burial, and resurrection. But it's also just Jonah showed up and preached. And people repented. If preaching isn't enough for somebody, technically, that, that's between them and God. God sends a messenger. You are pricked in your heart. And you resist the Holy Ghost. Well, God should prove... No, God does not have to prove one thing to anybody. Now, He does a lot, if you're watching. And He does a lot out of mercy and goodness. But technically, Jesus said, no, nah, He doesn't have to prove one thing. And beware of that silliness. Because all it is, is actually hardness of heart. And it actually doesn't matter how much you show them. It's a wrong mindset. 
And it's like the people in the desert, they'll just keep on in a circle. But that's not us. Somebody say, that's not me. That's not me. Not me. I'm hungry to the truth. I'm open to the truth. Amen. Amen. And truth is in Him. Praise God. Amen. True. The only true and lasting freedom is in knowing Jesus. And that's a process. Amen. Process. Say, I'm getting to know Him. I love Him. He sure is wonderful. And I'm hungry for more. And I'm open to Him changing me. So there's actually something called being transformed in the Greek. That's a metamorphosis. It's literally like one day Jessica meant, oh no, Tyler mentioned it. It's a caterpillar and then through a glorious, beautiful, special thing that if you just watch a video, it looks like, how did that happen? But it happened. Uh, but then they become a butterfly. It's you're transformed Amen. out of whoever you were through the new birth. And then allowing that new person that's inside of you, the new born again you, to just continue to grow and develop. Amen. You are actually transformed from the inside out. Yes. And it, it results in greater freedom. Yeah. So if you're hungry for freedom, this is what you're hungry for. Yes. If you're hungry for the real deal, this is what you're hungry for. It's in him. But there has to be a yielding. So maybe, there has to be change. Yeah. Change it. Change is not change until it's changed. it's changed. So you have to actually, oh, who's going to change? You're actually going to have to, something called meekness. Meekness is a humility thing. It's being honest with God. You can lie to, what did they say? You could, you could fool some people most of the time. You could most <laughs> fool... Most people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And even if you did, you'd only be what the Bible calls self-deceived. Yeah. Who's the biggest loser out of that deal? You are. You can fool the whole world. The whole world could worship you, but you're lost. Yes. So it's pointless. So you don't have to pretend, but you need to be honest. Like, am I actually experiencing change in my life? I'm hungry for change. I'm hungry to know you. I'm hungry to know you. I love your word. I love spending time with you, but there's got to be some results. I, I want change, God. I want greater freedom. I want strength. And then I want to see other people change. So here's a key. James 1, 21. Lay aside all filthiness, overflow of wickedness. So we've heard, we watch, we saw, see different scriptures. All this stuff is bondage. So you get rid of that. That's called repentance. Receive with meekness, receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. That has to do with your soul getting freer and freer and more and more like the image of Christ that it so longs to be and is designed to be. Okay? But receive with meekness. What are some markers of somebody that's truly hungry? I already said it, but I'll repeat it. They're going to be looking for food. And then when they find the food, they're actually going to partake. Yes. And then that food goes in and goes through a process. It actually does something. And it starts turning into sugars and energy and all sorts of stuff. Yes or no? So that the Word of God, if you receive it correctly, actually starts doing stuff inside of you. Amen. And you got to let that process. Okay, so what do we do? I say, I'm hungry. Are you hungry? Yes. Anybody? I'm hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Are you hungry? Yes. yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Okay, so what do I actually do? Actual change inside of you must occur if you see change. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Actual change inside of you must occur if you are to see change come through you. Yes. Okay, so what, are the, what do I do when I'm hungry? Come. you got to come. Amen? It's not enough to just say, I'm hungry, God. Okay, then come. <laughs> come to me, all who labor. How many? All. Oh. And are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Jesus gives rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. So we actually have to be learning from him. You actually have to be listening. Jackie's a learner, right? You're learning. I'm get, a learner. I get full from scriptures. You get full, <laughs> yes. It's going inside of you and it's doing stuff. Amen. Yes. I'm learning. 
I read it, I meditate it, I preach it, and then I go through my day and I listen to it. Amen. The Holy Ghost reminds me, joy. Oh yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not pretending, I'm just, I'm, I'm let, when he says it, the oil is there. Yes. I, oh yeah, somehow I was stopping the oil. I gotta let that oil flow in my marriage, with my children, in my house, in my own soul. Guys, if you love everybody else, but you beat yourself up, I'm teaching you something. You need to, you need to learn the, word, the truth. You need to be kind to yourself. You should have joy in your own soul. Yes. Did you know it's not, it's not, it doesn't please God for you to be nice when you're at work, nice to your kids, but then if you're alone, uh, uh, uh. God wants you blessed. Yes. So I listen to this, and then he helps me. Love. Love is patient. Oh yeah, patient. Ah, I just gonna listen to my children instead of being irritated with them. Amen? Amen? And the more I do that, I'm being changed. I'm learning his way. So we're learning. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. I'll, I am gentle, lowly in heart. You will find rest for your souls. Will we? Yes. yes. So can everybody find life? Yes. yes. Is it available? Yes. yes. Is freedom available? Yes. yes. One of the wonderful fruits of freedom is rest for your soul. And rest isn't just laying on a bed. It's in here. Yes. Ah. Amen. Who can, who's receiving it right now? Amen. Ah, rest. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. So we come, we taste, we see. Now, when he said come, he said come to the waters. This is what we're talking about. Remember, we're hungry, we're thirsty. You who have how much money? No money. No money. Come buy, eat, come buy wine and milk without money, without price. You just come to him. You got to come, but you have to come. Come to the table. Yes. If you're hungry, what is he saying? Come. 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 We're going to do this in a minute. We're going to pray. We're going to give everybody an opportunity to just come to him. It is done on the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, this Revelation 21, verse 6. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to who? Him. To him who thirsts. There is a requirement. He doesn't force food down you. Are you hungry? He actually can't do anything. Are you hungry? Like if you're if you say, I'm not really that hungry, God. Like he has nothing else, okay. Right. Hopefully they'll get hungry soon. And if not, maybe I'll have to send a preacher and yell as loud as they can at them to try and wake them up. Say, hey, you need to know that you should be hungry. Like, get hungry because your life actually depends on it. Actually, the world is going crazy out there. And you have a limited amount of time before it gets so crazy that you would have wished I would have listened to that loud, arrogant preacher earlier and actually got hungry for God and made God my everything. 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 Amen. Freely to those who thirst. Are you hungry? Yes. yes. Are you? Yes. Really? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. What are you hungry for? Hungry for life? Yes. True life is only in Jesus, the person of Him, knowing Him, encountering Him, receiving Him. Hungry for freedom? Yes. That's found in truth, which comes through a commitment who's listening, to following Jesus, being his disciple. Freedom is actually for disciples. It's not because God says, oh, you're such a great disciple, I'm finally going to award you the award of freedom. No, it's this is how it's worked out. If you want me to bench press 200 pounds, it's going to take a while, okay? But if you work me out, who, who thinks they could get me there? Who has enough faith? I need somebody. Oh, Shay's going to be my trainer. We can get the 200 pounds. We'll get there. But don't start me because that'll kill me. Right? You could break stuff, hurt stuff, choke me to death. Please don't do that. Then you're going to have an eternal enemy on your hands. I'm joking. She would forgive you. It, it would have been my fault. But, no, but it, it's, it's going to be a process. And if I'll push through the process, I'll have the award of being able to push through 200 pounds. It's not that Tyler says, oh, you're such a great... Great. A, a for effort. Here's your reward. You can bench two. No, I can't bench 200. doesn't matter how many awards you give me. Actually, I, I'm not there. 
So when he says uh, to those who believe, if you continue in my word, if you're actually a disciple, you're going to get there. You're going to know the truth. Amen. And you're going to realize, oh, I'm actually free. You're actually already free, but you, it's a process to even find out you're actually free. Yeah. What? What? As soon as you find out, you're like, get out of here. What are you still doing in my life? Mm -hmm. Done with you forever. Oh, mm -hmm. God. Woo, imagine life without that thing. <coughs> Hallelujah. You can start being excited. Freedom. Somebody say freedom. Freedom. Freedom is for disciples. Not because you're awarded it. But it's that's how you get there. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> and then the last one, for the right to a life. Remember life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Everyone has that right. It's not a, it's not, it's a, not a communism thing. And you've got to work for it. You find out how the work, the kingdom works, and you go work it. And you can prosper. And it's exciting. And prosperity is not just about money. It's actually about you being a fulfilled person, doing what you're called to do. This is in life. Yes. Life is not life on a beach in Hawaii. Maybe for a week here or there for fun, but not for eternity. And be like, okay, I want to go do something. I got to go do something. I got to go do something. All right. So... Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? So what do we got to do? Ask Jesus to come in, number one. Commit everything to him. And then listen to this last one. <laughs> I'm just going to say it's straightforward. Heard it in the spirit last night. It's everything I preached. Quit sinning and get to work. Amen. Quit sinning, get to work. That means start working the process. It's your free, you're free to pursue happiness. Go. Go. There's a famous movie. It's not that famous. But it actually made this town famous. Who wants to who wants to guess what it is? Rat, Rat race. <laughs> Anyone ever seen it? So yeah. this, Mr. Bean and all sorts of other famous actors. And in Rat Race, the race is to get... Uh, it, the guy says it's this really eccentric guy, I think a casino owner or something, weird guy. And he brings all these totally random people to this casino and he brings them into this big boardroom and none of them even know why they're there. And they're all, you know, different silly personalities and all that. And then he's like, the reason I'm here, and he has these crazy teeth. The reason I'm here is because in a little town called Silver City, New Mexico, in the train station, which doesn't exist, you know that, but they don't know that, and it's a real movie, there's a locker with a hundred, no, with a million dollars in it. And I'm going to give you each a key to that locker. And the first one to the locker wins a million dollars. And the only rule is, there are no rules. Go. And they all go, um, okay, so let me ask you a question. Uh, what do you mean, like, he says, Go. And when they, they just all sit there. And they're like, does he mean like, what do you, like, um, does anybody remember the movie? You'll just go look up a couple clips. And then finally, they get it. Like, he like gets a gun, he says, go. He takes the gun and goes, Phew. and then they're like, ah, like there's a million dollars on the stakes. And all they got to do is go. go. You got a pursuit of happiness. The track is there, but you got to go to work. Amen. Get on it. Are you hungry? I said, yes, Lord, I'm hungry. What are you hungry for? To know him. But not just to know him, I actually want change. Yeah. And then I'm not just hungry for me, God. I'm hungry to see other people. Mm -hmm. Know you, and not just know you like they can have a wonderful worship experience. Yeah, we want that. But then where you're actually changed, and your life is bettered by it. Yes. Who actually wants a better life? Yes. And it's not just for, per, it's for selfish reasons. It's just, it's better to be free and happy. Are you hungry? Let me finish with these two scriptures. And I'm going to give you an opportunity. <laughs> to know God is a real thing. Yes. And many of you, most of you, already probably, maybe everybody, has ever asked Jesus to be the Lord of their life. But we're going to renew our commitment, say, God, I'm hungry. And then I'm going to give you the opportunity, if you've never, yeah, of course, if you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, that's number one. We're going to make, give you the opportunity to recommit and say, God, I commit everything to you. 
I give you everything. I'm hungry for you. I'm going to go after you. But then if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit to pray and praying in other tongues and you're hungry for that, we are hungry to see you touched by God. We'll give you that opportunity to pray in just a minute. Peter said in Acts 2.38, Repent. Have I preached that today? Yeah, yes, change. Quit sinning. Repent, turn. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is to you and your children, to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Watch this. And with many other words, he testified, who's looking at the screen, and exhorted them, saying what? Be saved. From what? From first, from first generation. Do you, is there something to be saved from out there? Yes. Am I just sugarcoating the world here, or did we talk about I told you, this is actually important. There's craziness out there. There's no promise that it's going to get better. Yes, I told you, go vote. And then come hell or high water, you voted according to the word of God. And so you know you're on God's side. And whatever happens, happens. And then you keep rolling. Whatever happens is going to happen. And I'm going to keep rolling, preaching the, the gospel, hearing the voice of God and doing whatever God says. And I'll be fine. When the dust settles... You'll see me there. I'm not talking about real guys. Don't worry. But we're going to make it. Somebody say, we're going to make it. Because we're on the winning team. And like Tyler said, if somehow I got taken out, don't even worry about me. I'll be up there. Like in a party. Like, ah, I'm never going back. Ah. Yeah, but your children. I know, but heaven is so wonderful that somehow, even though you have children and loved ones all back there, they're like, oh, you're like, well, they'll be okay. Because you see God, you're like, they're really okay. Like, everything's going to be okay. You're not worried. You're like, oh, God, i got to go back because without me. No, you're up in heaven. You see the glory of God. You're not thinking about without me, they're not going to make it. You're like, oh, they'll be all right. And you start spinning and running laps around the lily field. That's why I'm excited. I'm taking Abigail through the fields full of lilies and just spinning and we'll go up in the air and spin. Yes or no? Yes. 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 We already have a date. I can't, I, I, I can't wait. But it, I'm looking forward to it. Amen? So whatever happens, happens. It doesn't even matter. But I'm going to run my race. Amen. So I'm going to vote. I'm going to do and I'm going to pray for this country because I'm saved but there's a lot of people that are not saved and there is legislature does make a huge yes. difference. If you indoctrinate kids from before, from the belly up, yeah, Lord have mercy, of such wicked confusion, you're giving them no, apart from the, which it's always apart from the gospel, but it just makes it sad. Yes or no? Yes. yes. So, but <clears throat> all that to say is there is, there's serious stuff going on out there. So this is actually a real deal. Peter said, be saved from this perverse generation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Are you hungry? We're going to do this song. You shall receive, and then I'm going to pray for this, because I told you God is real. Somebody say God is real. God is real. That means, guess what? You can actually know Him. Yes. That when you come into worship service, it's not just that guy over there that looks kind of wacky, because he, he looks like he's actually like encountering God or something. That's kind of weird to me. You can actually encounter Him, know Him, feel His hand on your life. And actually, that's a free gift. And that's when you're going to actually have power. Jesus, this is actually one of the foundational things that Jesus established when he built his church. Is don't go anywhere until you have the Holy Spirit. He said you will receive power when? When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you'll be my witnesses in Judea. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth. That word witness means a martyr. You'll be willing to go to the ends of the earth, come hell or high water, no matter what happens. And not everybody's called to go to the ends of the earth. But if you lived your whole life in Silver City, that's the power that will cause you to, um, to stand and keep going and not quit and endure to the end is the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen? Yes. Let's stand up. I'm gonna, we're going to do this. going to lead you in this song. And uh, we'll just sing it out from your heart. And then I'm going to...
I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray in a second. But let's just sing this out. Children, listen and learn this song. It goes like this. You ready? And everybody else is going to sing. Well, let's just sing from our hearts. Lord, we love you so much. Are you hungry? Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Are you hungry? Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Are you hungry? Yes, Lord. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. Then come and feed, and I will fill thee. Yes, come receive of me. That's so wonderful. I am hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. I am hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. I am hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. So I come and receive. Oh, Lord, please fill me. Yes, fill me with yourself. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? I am hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. I am hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. I am hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, Lord. So I give you all. Yes, I commit my all. As you fill me, I'll do your will. Who agrees with that? Just lift your hands. Let's say that one last time. So I give you all. Yes, I commit my all. As you fill me, I'll do your will. Who means that prayer? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hand and say, Lord, I give you everything. I give you my whole life. Take everything. Amen. Everybody's eyes bowed real quick and eyes closed, heads bowed. If you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you don't remember a time that's really clear when you said, Jesus. I recognize that I've messed up and I, I need a Savior and I know that you're it and I want you to be my Lord and come into my heart. If you've never had a time in your life that's really clear that you know where you ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life, I want to give you that opportunity today. Or number two, maybe you have, but you don't feel like you've been as close to him as you know you should be and want to be. And as we talk about being hungry today, you're hungry. You're hungry. You're open to making a new, fresh start with him and saying just a fresh saying, God, yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry that I haven't been following like I, you like I should and I want to. And you want to make a fresh commitment. Man, I'd love to pray with you. Or number three, maybe you're, you're saved, but for whatever reason, you don't feel that assurance there's anything in you that that doubts that you're actually saved and you're a child of God and you want to make that 100% clear. If you're in one or, or any one of those uh, categories today, number one, you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Number two, you know you have, but you haven't been living for him and you want to make a fresh start. Or number three, you just want to make sure beyond the shadow of a doubt that you're saved, you're a child of God. If that's you, lift your hand. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else? Awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. I'm going to ask those who lifted their hands to come real quick. Just come right up here. I'm going to pray with you. Simple prayer. Come. Come. And then I'm going to extend the opportunity. I talked about... Um, and everybody's praying this prayer at the same time. Which is awesome. Thank you, Lord. He wants to recommit. Amen? And fresh. Amen. Everything. And really, that's everybody here, if you've been listening. Way down deep, we're going to make a fresh commitment to go harder. But then, um, uh, if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues, we've had a number of people over the past year who've started praying in tongues. You have something you want to say? And it's just amazing, because you come as a child, 
we had somebody in the children's that received the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the first time today, and it's easy. You just yes. receive him, yes. and, you, and it, you get the prayer language. Yes. Thank you, Lord. It makes all the difference. And so if you're hungry for that, and you've not yet prayed in tongues, who of you prays in tongues? And it's awesome. And uh, we've had different people come and pray and ask, and God does it. And it's wonderful. It changes your life. So, Mr. Jefferson, stand right here. And I'm just going to pray with a simple prayer. We're all going to pray. And this is awesome. But is there anybody who is hungry for that, that you want to pray that God will fill you to overflowing and you pray in tongues? If that's you, come quickly. Anybody wants that? Yes, come on, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Give her a big hand clap. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to lead everybody in a one general prayer, everybody. One prayer fits all prayer of commitment and rededication. Let's pray. And then we're going to pray to receive the Holy Spirit. And everybody that already prays in the Spirit, we're all going to pray. Because we need to be a church that prays uninhibitedly and unashamedly in yes. tongues because it really is powerful. Yes. But you'll receive something today, okay? You're hungry for that? Yes. Amen. Amen. Jefferson, are you hungry for that? Amen. I am. All right. Hi. Father, thank you so much for these that have come and for everybody here, Lord. We are speaking to every single one of us. But Lord, we make a fresh commitment to you. Put at least one hand on your heart, one hand up to heaven. Just say this. Say, God in heaven. God in heaven. I know that you're real. I know that you're real. And I need you. And I, need you. I, believe I believe that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. That he died on the cross for me. That he died on the cross for me. And I need him. And I need him. I know he was raised from the dead. I know he was raised from the dead. And he's coming again soon. And he's coming again soon. Say, Lord, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. Come inside of me, Lord. Come inside of me, Lord. Do something new. Do something new. Touch me, God. Touch me, God. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. I am hungry for you. I am hungry for you. And I'm hungry for change. I am hungry for change. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for Mr. Jefferson. Thank you for his life and his humility. And I pray that this will be a marker in his life. I pray you do something powerful in his life. he never be the same in Jesus' name. And then for Miss uh, Leslie Etta, she's come open to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord. You said, so this is what the Bible says. Okay, I read one scripture. Uh, you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth. Thank you, Lord. And when he, when he fills us with his Spirit, then there's something called the gift of praying in tongues that he gives you. And it's a supernatural prayer language, so you can uh, express from your spirit uh, how much you really love God. And so we're going to pray that he'll touch you, fill you today, baptize you, overflow you. And then that you'll pray in other tongues. And then you let that flow and, and let it change your life forever. Yes. But uh, Jesus said that if anyone will ask the Father for the Holy Spirit, he will give him. Thank you. Amen.
fire, hunger, thirst for you, God, never before. Uh, thank you for that eternal and unquenchable fire, all the assumed fire in the name of Jesus burns up any trap and puts a holy hunger for the holy things, the power of God in the name of Jesus. Thank God I have the gifts, the gifts of the Holy Ghost forming in our life. Thank you for visions and dreams. And Understanding on another level, strength and power on another level. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Oh, He's the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want everybody, everybody that's hungry for God, that prays in tongues, I want you to open up your mouth and pray right now. Just say, I'm hungry now. I'm not ashamed of you, God. I'm hungry for you, God. I love you, God. Hallelujah. Set me ablaze, Lord. Set me ablaze, Lord. I'm hungry for you, God. The knowledge of you, God. Your strength, God. Your discernment, God. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Thank the Lord, the fire of God. Somebody say the fire of God. Fire. The power of God. Power. It's available. It's, available. it's free. free. And I need it. And I need it. Man, who got something today? Yes. Who got a word today? Yes. Okay, when inside of you is going to talk to you, because it's not an it, it's a he. He's real. He's going to talk to you all week. Who's listening? Amen. Who's going to let him talk to you? Amen. He's going to be talking. And just make a decision. I surrender all yes, Lord. Just say yes, and then he helps you, okay? You don't have to wonder, can I do it in my own strength? Just say yes, Lord. Just say yes, and then he just keeps helping you. Amen? Amen. All right. Love you. Father, yes, Jessica, we'll say something. So, you just want to say one thing that I was telling the children. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and you're praying in other tongues, like Miss Leslie had just received that, she started praying in tongues. Woo! You need to do it every day. Yes, do it. You don't have, and I told the children, you don't go to school and start going, la, ta, sha, ka, la, 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 la. No, it's between you and God. You pray to build yourself up in your most holy faith. I can't love you. I can't love people around me other than with the love of God. It's no longer I live. And when you pray in the spirit, you were sweet. That's what broke depression and suicidal thoughts off of me yes. was when I prayed in the Holy Ghost, yes. okay? So I'm very passionate about that. Pray every single day like you read your Bible every single day. Amen. All right, we love you so much. We'll be back here Tuesday night. Bless you. Make sure to hug some people or smile at them or give them a high five or something before you go. There's probably coffee left if you'd like your coffee. We love you. Bye-bye.